We were born into prison as children of prisoners. At first, we were not even aware of our status and horrible condition. We were ignorant of our chains, blind to the bars that surrounded and confined us, unaware of any other existence. We lived in a dark, ugly, putrid dungeon of death. And then one day, a visitor came. His name was Law. He rattled on the bars and shone light into our darkness, disrupting our world of peaceful imprisonment. Law came to tell us about God. He told us of love and righteousness, of goodness and blessings, and the joys of freedom. He pointed out our squalid, impoverished imprisonment and lamented the filth, hunger, and disease of our existence. He even promised that one day we could be free. But not today. Not now. We begged and pleaded, open the doors, release our chains, let us go free. He turned sadly to go and simply said, I cannot. And as he trudged slowly away, we returned to our prison, now aware, now angry at our condition. Unable to escape, we continued the vigil of misery, brokenness, and death with only the slimmest of hopes for freedom. Time passed. Conditions worsened. The darkness deepened. Evil grew and wickedness birthed wickedness. Deceit and lies became leaders among us, convincing many that they were already free. Teaching that if you were better than your cellmate, then that constituted goodness and righteousness, and you were free and they were not. Many listened, but most saw through the emptiness of their words. We were at the point of total despair, resigned to eternal imprisonment when another visitor came. Unlike law, he didn't stand outside and call attention to our problems. Instead, he came inside. He moved into our prison. His name was Grace, and he moved with such dignity, compassion, and freedom that we could not help but follow. From cell to cell he walked, casting words of hope, healing wounds of despair, letting the light of his love chase the darkness away. We begged Grace to stay with us. Oh, please, please stay, we cried. You brighten up our prison and free our spirits. But Grace shook his head and smiled. I didn't come here to live with you, he said. I came here so that you could live with me. And with that statement, he turned and walked toward the door. And the most amazing thing happened. As Grace touched the outer door, all the doors opened and all the chains fell off. And he invited us to go with him to live free forever. For a moment, we hesitated as the denied dreams of those darkest hours shattered the only reality we had ever known, freedom. That which had only been a word, a concept beyond hope, was now actually offered to us, to all of us. And then we responded. Some burst for the open doors, shouting and singing. Some walked with confidence through the broken bars, smiles on their faces and tears in their eyes. Others stepped cautiously to the entrance, nervous and unsure, until they felt the cool breeze and the warmth of the sunshine, and they too entered into the freedom of grace. But not all walked out. In the most unbelievable and incredible twist of events, many chose to stay in the darkness, in the filth, in the prison. They even rechained themselves and tried to close the doors. Were they more comfortable with the pain and despair they knew than the discomfort of change that freedom demanded? Or were they so deceived and blinded by a lifetime of lies that now they were immune to the truth? At times, they even laughed at, mocked, and ridiculed those who were unchained, free in Christ. They even tried to keep people imprisoned who wanted to experience freedom, telling them lies of danger, pain, and sacrifice that awaited them outside the safe confines of their, of their prison cell. And many remain to this day living in darkness, bound by despair, afraid of the light. And yet, some, some still leave, discovering the fullness of grace 
and the wonders of life. But being set free doesn't always mean that we live free. For we are people of routine, repeating habits of captivity even while we walk in freedom. Some who are free even try to impose imaginary bars and spiritual chains to comfort themselves. Their minds are still more at ease with the pain of law than the freedom of grace. And all who are free struggle with the memories of prison and the voices that bid us to return to captivity. It is only when we remember the words of truth and follow in the steps of the one who freed us that we become truly free. Live in grace and be set free.